how you were all excited about the movie version of World War Z? Yeah, not, not so much anymore. Would it be so much better if Conan took a page from Miss Manners? He should, don't you think? Be more polite and, and well-mannered? No? no? Are, you, are you sure? Okay. Lois Lane is changing her hair color and Marvel's Runaways is back on track. Nigel checks in from the multiverse and we talk to one of my favorites, Saul Rubinek from Warehouse 13. You couldn't ask for more from this installment of Slice, so don't you dare. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Halfer, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson from Sci Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci Fi. Sliceofsci-fi.com. And welcome, everyone, to another Slice of Sci Fi. I'm Michael Arminenge. And I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I am Tim Adamek. I'm Treble. <laughs> and I'm Megan Zier. Hey, Megan. How you doing? Don't you mean Triple H? No. Oh, yeah. Mayhem. 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 Trouble she's got, and mayhem. She's got many nicknames. Yeah, she right. does. And Probably we don't down, have time. Down. We don't have time to discuss it right now. We got news to talk about. Positions, everyone. And now, the news. Okay. Let's oh, get to it. Oh, remember how excited we were? Like, World War Z is going to be the awesomest Yay! movie. Yay! Yeah, we just got cold water splashed on our face. No. Yeah. Really? Paramount released a press release giving the film's release date, which is going to be December of 2013, and a plot synopsis. This is where the problem comes in. Now, if you read the book, you know that it's an oral history from those who survived the zombie apocalypse or zombie oh. war. However, the w- movie version is produced and starring Brad Pitt will instead rev- revolve around... <clears throat> Around United Nations employee Gary Lane, played by Brad Pitt, who traverses the world in a race against time to stop the zombie pandemic <laughs> that is toppling armies, governments, and threatening to, to decimate humanity itself. This is going to suck. <laughs> wow. Really? I am so underwhelmed. You know what? I robot. Right? I'm, it's I robot. Yep. It yeah, may absolutely. be a decent movie, but then why oh, call it that if you're not going to make it? Yeah, like, what would happen the, to the great book that they that was uh, to you know, sold? I, I, a copy. You remember when we first talked about this? I had the perfect idea on how to do the film. Yes, mm. you and I, you and I sat there and talked about it. It was fantastic. Yeah. I hope Max Brooks is making buckets of money. I really do because yeah. the dude deserves it. But I mean, uh, Owie. yeah. When director Marcus Nispel began pitching a new version of Conan the Barbarian, he tells film school rejects that he had to sell studio executives that the movie should shoot for an R rating and that a Conan movie should not be PG-13 or PG. She just told him, what is good in life, media execs? Exactly. <laughs> R rating. Which, by the to way, is drive, not in the movie. Yeah. To that drive is, your 3D in front of your <laughs> audiences. That is not in the movie, in case you were holding out for okay. that, by the way. Uh, it's an it's R rated idea, no. and you have to be true to that, he said. Should Conan be a little nice to the ladies? No. He's misogynistic. <laughs> Hello, Maybe baby. he shouldn't spit yeah. and burp when he eats? No. You have to remind them you're not making Prince Charming, but Conan the keyword... Barbarian. barbarian and having seen it it's cheesy it's violent really? conan is great the plot is stupid some of the acting is lame but if you like that sort of thing you'll be happy avoid there the 3d go. version Yay. if you need more detail check out the listener feedback show from this week because i discussed it more there all righty okay. then there okay you megan you know your job is to hold back trouble because Uh-oh. she is going to just burst is this loose the here. hair thing? Is this yeah. physical or verbal? Do I actually you, have to get up? You, have to you physically may have, have to physically to. Hit her with her. a chair. Hit her with a chair. <laughs> All right. I got a stool right so, here. So Zack Snyder's upcoming Man of Steel appears to be uh, shaking up the Superman mythology a lot. <clears throat> <clears throat> so last week we got news that Lawrence Fishburne has been cast as Perry White. I don't object to that. That's not this way. Now yeah. comes news that Amy Adams will bring something new to the character of Lois Lane. A news report as well as footage from the set indicates Adams won't dye her hair or wear a brunette wig for her role as Lois Lane. Instead, Adams will keep her strawberry blonde look locks for the role. Wow. Eh -eh. So a major change, obviously, in how Lois has been drawn and depicted over the years in comic books, movies, and TV shows. Trouble. Trouble. I I, I am more than irate. I hated the fact that the blonde from... uh, Cruise or Crush or whatever that surfboard movie. Blue Crush. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, played her, but she at least dyed her hair. Because if anything you look up on Lois Lane, Lois Lane is always referred to as a brunette, dark brunette. And even um, Erica Durant's 
gradually made her hair browner and darker during the show and it's more true because um the thing about superman is that he's not falling for the dumb blonde i'm sorry He's falling for well, the no, smart Well, now he's girl. falling for the strawberry blonde. He's now, now he's dead. Right. So, so, are, so are we making a statement that the, the blondes are smart too? So anyways, <laughs> fanboys, uh, <laughs> Superman fanboys are <laughs> screaming in rage <laughs> right now, as she we can see. She could maybe qualify so. as a ginger since it's strawberry. Oh. It's true. <laughs> so. Only a ginger wow. can go another ginger, ginger. I mean, gingers have no soul, we know. <laughs> I'm a fake so. ginger. Yeah, so. All right. <laughs> While wow. HBO has renewed True Blood for a fifth season, that doesn't mean that the entire cast is expecting to be back for it. Evan really? Rachel Wood tells MTV News that her character of Queen Sophie Anne Leclerc could be written out of the show. Wood said her arc on the show could be coming to a close and that the producers haven't given her the final word on whether her character will be back. Didn't Ooh. didn't she already get written out? Did I, I thought so. I thought she had I thought she was well, done. It, Unless they're thinking maybe m- I don't want to spoil it for people who may not be Man, I really, yeah, yeah, I really yeah, thought yeah. her, her, she was finalized, she was finalized an episode or two ago. Yeah, like, it's been out in books now. Oh, yeah. it doesn't follow books. Never mind. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> okay, we got time for one more story. One more, real quick. Okay, so the Runaways movie, it's from Marvel, is, is in the works, and according to the film script writer Drew Pierce, who's currently working on a script for Iron Man three, he told the playlist the project has been put on hold to make way for Joss Whedon's Avenger movie. He said basically the Avengers came along and everything else in Marvel was put on hold for a year. But uh, of course, it the was. script is there and we're good to go. It's kind of like being at the airport when you're waiting for your slot to take off with Marvel. <laughs> and we're hoping and, we get a slot next and year. And everybody's sitting on the plane yeah, and they're angry much. that they're not taking yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought Joan Jett was the strongest part of that whole thing. So anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right away, yeah. wrong one. Yeah. I think Lita yeah. Ford is much more stronger anyways. She's a great performer. All right, so let's go to uh, some more let's news. Get some, let's get some real cool news. news. Yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. <laughs> This is a Multiverse News Update. This is an exclusive special report from the Multiverse News. Thanks to the hard work of Mike from Des Moines, he was able to disguise himself as an R2 unit and sneak into the underground secret volcano lair of J.J. Abrams. Once inside, he was able to extract some top secret plans about the next Star Trek movie. Let's listen. I am sick and tired of waiting for Doctor Who to end so I can reboot it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a half Klingon Doctor Who with a sonic batleth. And his companion will be an Orion slave girl. Yeah, yeah harumph, and, harumph, uh, harumph, harumph. Let's, uh, let's have a predator in there too, why not? Yeah, and, and, uh, and Sigourney Weaver, can we get Sigourney Weaver? Yeah, harumph, 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 harumph. Oh, now we're rolling. Hey, who let this R2 unit in here? Get it out, get it out. I'll reboot that show later. In other news, it looks like Buffy Summers, the famous vampire killer, has just signed to become the next Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts. Congratulations on your new job, Professor Buffy. And now with his first report for the Multiverse News is our newest member of the team, Shane from Sydney. Shane, take it away. Thank you, Nigel. I'm reporting from Club 27 in Heaven where a spontaneous party has just broken out on the news that a bar may finally be coming to heaven. Now, as you know, Nigel, Heaven has had a strict policy of no alcohol since that notorious water into wine incident back in 33. However, on the news, popular former musician Jimi Hendrix said he was gagging for a drink. Kurt Cobain told us that he was looking forward to a shot, and Jimi Morrison quipped that he was going to bathe in the stuff. Just one moment. I'm sorry, Nigel. Um, we've just heard the Angel Gabriel has just told us that this party is over. Apparently, the new arrival isn't that kind of wine house. Back to you, Nigel. That's it for the news. We now return to the Draco Vista Studios. What's up, babe? I've been thinking. We should start practicing philanthropy. Yeah, sounds good to me. Sweet leaf, take your hand off my... I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Um, uh, hmm. Don't you want a little foreplay first? What? What, you want to just jump right into the philanthropy? What do you think philanthropy is, anyway? Um, well, or, uh, something dirty, isn't it? No, silly. Philanthropy is donating money to support something you believe in. Donating money? Clipper, babe, I ain't exactly Bill Gates. You don't have to be rich. Even a little bit helps. Well, I don't know. I'm not really all that passionate about anything. Except you, of course. Don't you ever think about anything except sex? Well... You like slices of sci-fi, don't you? You should support Farpoint Media. Honey, you don't understand. I love Slice, but it doesn't cost anything. 
It costs something to make it. I don't know. Bandwidth, streaming the studio, podcasting fluid, all those things cost money, and if Mike doesn't have them, he can't produce the show. Huh? All you have to do is go to sliceofsci-fi.com and click the donate button. Yeah, but... I think philanthropy is really sexy. In that case, there, I did it. Oh, sweet leaf, you're wonderful. And welcome to more Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Ormenegger. I am Tim Adamick. And I'm Brian Brown. Hey, we are pleased as punch, to say the least, today, mm-hmm. because we have a guy we've wanted to talk to for a long time. And we have Saul Rubinek from Warehouse 13, folks. You know him as, as Artie Nielsen on that show. Welcome to the show. You call yourself. Listen, this is a red letter day. We just found out that we're getting renewed for the fourth season. Woohoo! Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. That is fantastic news. We were worried about that because we just heard the news about Eureka getting the, you know, eh, oh. Yes, very sad. Great show. We loved that show. We liked the fact that it was a crossover. And, uh, you know, in this business, you sometimes you're unceremoniously let go and you're thanked for your services and they move on. But, uh, listen, those are great guys. I was even on the first season of Eureka as a guest star, and I really, really think it's a great show. Um, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Warehouse 13 and how great it's doing, right? Oh, most, uh, most absolutely. certainly. Absolutely. It was a phenomenal series. Uh, in this, season. this season has been really great in that we learn a lot about these characters that we've yeah. been very familiar with for the past couple seasons, and all of a sudden now we're getting even more information about it, which I think is fantastic because we thought, oh, we know these characters. That's fine. You know, we know Artie. We know we know Pete. We know Micah. And all of a sudden, we're learning a lot more about these characters. I think you're going to continue to as long as the series is alive because right. we're not a procedural. So we're really uh, a recapitulation of a family dynamic. And it's why they hired the brilliant Jack Kenny to do this show. He He creates a great deal of humor and he creates a family chemistry between us. And that's really what the show is about. It's almost incidental. I mean, all the way, it's a great premise. I mean, I mean obviously a great premise and a really a beautiful fantasy adventure that's for the whole family, which is something that our cast is particularly proud of. Is that like Doctor Who in the UK, uh, you know, there's something for everybody eight years old and up, and everybody thinks it's aimed directly at them. And, you know, it's a kind of show that was designed to do that. And with the rebranding of the network and the fact that we came through is really a testament to the way the network and the studio and the writers have all created this electric synergy between us all. It's it's nice to be able to say because usually actors will shut their mouths when it comes to network and studio and pay lip service to how great everybody is. In this case, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to say these are people who love the show. They love working on the show, both the studio and the network. Uh, Mark Stern was really the, the soul behind creating this originally, and now the executives, um, you know, are rightly proud of the numbers that they've gotten, and it translates really into a big budget, a budget that's really network size, um, that, so the viewers are getting a, a big bang for their buck uh, in terms of the way this looks. If I can just do a shout out, oh yeah, uh, to um, I, I really want to say that a lot has been said and written about how the show developed, about um, the writers, the cast, the storylines. But I think that the unsung hero of our show, um, now that we've all praised everybody else, is really Franco Dakotas and Joanne Hansen and and people who are doing props. And Franco is our production designer. And I have to say that in 35 years of doing television, I've never been on a television show that has better better or more beautiful design. The design team is second to none. They are they're brilliant. And maybe and they really I, I really wanted to say it I, and I'm hoping people talk about it because it really is a beautifully designed show. No no shortcuts. No. Oh, wow. Oh you, yeah. You, you took those questions right just, out of my mouth. You just stole my question. <laughs> that was the question I had was I was gonna say who's building I'm all a, those I'm, fantastic I'm really, yeah, props. I'm a, I'm a very cheap date. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I I am absolutely blown away every single week at the the quality and the level of props and the steampunky nature and just the really cool aspect of all the things you get to play with. I am so my jealous. Son, my son, my uh, right, son, he's sixteen last year when he was fifteen. He came up after school, uh, was over, and, and during the summer he was an apprentice in the art department. And it's a really happy, happy and creative 
group of people under the two, under the leadership of this genius, Franco de Cotis, who really is a detail oriented, uh, an extraordinary person who absolutely adores the job that he's been given. And as you know, because you guys are fans of the show, I can tell every episode is different mm -hmm. from every other episode. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but our next episode is when people actually go inside a video game and warehouse is kind of like you're going to see a Monty Python version of Artie Nielsen there. And it's, it's really interesting. Every show, they have a whole challenge design-wise. And the, the writers have, um, have really taken something on themselves. Because what happens most of the time, guys, is, and I'm sure you know this and your viewers are, I mean, and your listeners are sophisticated enough to know that in a writer's room, the first year is all about, is this a warehouse show? You know, insert title here. Is this a blank? Is this one of our shows? Is this story we're coming up with? Is that, say, Warehouse 13? And I was, you know, getting hoarse saying the minute that the writers figure out what the formula is for our show, we're dead in the water. And that the truth is they never have come up with a formula. And other than the fact that it's true, we do have to find artifacts and we have to snag them, bag them, and tag them. Other than that, you know, we, we change horses midstream, mid scene. We we have comedy thriller. Where, what does Bruce Jack call it? A thrillerometry, you know. <laughs> but we're, yeah. we're a thriller. We, we really are a show that. Um, well, for example, Aaron Ashmore joined our cast this year. A wonderful actor who needed to be deaf. People have asked me, you know, how was it? Somebody else fitting into the show, and all of us who are regulars on the show will say the same thing that. In order to be on our show, the actors have to be deaf. Uh, they really have to figure out how to walk a tightrope between comedy and instant turning of drama and suspense and sometimes very sentimental and very dramatic point in stuff, and you have to be able to turn on a dime. And he's, he fit in beautifully. He's a very skilled young actor. We're very fortunate. But that's really the call. That's really what happened between the network and the studio and the writer's room is that they allowed that kind of uh, craziness to exist. Because trust me, it's much easier to do a formulaic show when it's a procedural. And I like some of those shows. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, for example, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Law & Order made its reputation on being a procedural. And uh, CSI, one of the most successful franchises in television history, is a procedural where certain elements get changed and they have five minutes to talk about this character's you know, ex-wife or his gambling problem or whatever. But our show, as you started off talking about, is really about the history of our of our characters. And the other great thing that they've come up with is a mythology for the warehouse. And this is just Warehouse 13 because it's a cool name. It really is the 13th iteration of a warehouse that started back 3,000 years ago. And, they, and the storylines, and especially the third season you'll see, has a great deal to do with the mythology of how the bureaucracy of the warehouse is run. So there's a deep history there. Um, and I think that that's inspired by the kind of writing, uh, the kind of great writing that Jules Verne did, that uh, Robert Louis Stevenson did, and uh, that, was, you know, that was done by uh, Lewis Carroll, and also more recently by the Harry Potter, the depth oh, yeah. of the mythology of that franchise. So we're in a really interesting, great world, and we, believe me, get a kick out of every time we get a script, their page turns for us. Wow, that's amazing stuff! And, and you you hit on the you hit the nail on the head when you said earlier that you you guys are are family, and I think you have a chemistry on this show that so many shows are just dying and to trying to kill yeah. for um, because you do speak to every age group. It is a this is truly a family show done the right way, where it's not talking down to the kids and it's not so nope. campy and cheesy that you just can't watch it at times mm -hmm. this show just it hits on every single level it, it yeah well we, yes thank you we, we do occasionally go over the top and there might be a cheesy moment but then we'll turn it immediately. yeah we won't laugh you know right. and and it really has more to do with the characters than anything else and that's really a testament to the way jack kenny has run the writer's room and and he's really fought really hard for that, and it, it pays off. The other thing that happens, and, I, and it's a really interesting thing after over 30 years doing this, I can tell you, when you get great television, it's not always going to be sung about, you know, mm -hmm. by, the, by, by the New York Times or, or Variety or by Emmy Awards or Golden Globe Awards. Uh, so those are cutting-edge shows, and they're like Mad Men or, or, or something that comes out of the blue or, or something that's extraordinary that has never been done before. We, we are 
we were a, a mishmash of a lot of different things and a little bit of Warriors of the Lost Ark, a little bit of X-Files, a little bit of this, and we create something unique, but it is a family show and it's, 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 it's on the sci-fi channel and we're not, we're not going to be noticed the, the same way. But the truth is that it's great television because people are taking chances every week. When there's fear on the, on the part of a network and a studio, it gets translated down to the writer's room and onto the production, and the people are afraid to lift their heads up because they might get cut off. And what you get is a common denominator kind of pablum, which, you, you know, a script that's just shaped brown and beige because people are afraid and you have nothing but you know, nothing, chances are taken. Well, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here, and this is why I'm praiseworthy for our bosses, is that chances are taken every week. And I know that that's the reason that our, we have our loyal fan base. Is they're, they're, Every show is different. They really don't know what to expect, not only episode to episode, but even scene to scene, they don't know what, what to expect. And we're not getting... Uh, we're not going to get any more um, comfortable as time goes on. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Wow, I'm so bummed that we're running out of time here because I could just go on talking about oh, this we all talk night. But yeah, we got lots of questions. Come, come visit the set. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get our charter jet and we'll hop right there up you there. There you go. Let's <laughs> do it. Where are you guys? Where are you located? We're in Phoenix. Oh, you're in Phoenix. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, absolutely. But, Saul, thank you very much for taking time to talk to us about Warehouse 13. We would love to talk to you again really, really, really soon. Really soon, absolutely. Uh, well, as you can tell, I'm genuinely excited uh, that we're getting picked up, and I love our show. I'm very proud of it, and, uh, I, you know, I love being able to support my family. doing something I love. I feel blessed and very lucky. That's very awesome. Fantastic. Folks, go out and watch Warehouse 13, and we will be back with more Slices of Sci-Fi right after this. At Carina Press, we know that sci-fi can be sexy. Our ebooks are taking futuristic adventure to the next level. After all, the phrase opposites attract takes on a whole new meaning when astronauts and aliens make a connection. And passion in the midst of action does add a certain urgency to any interworld encounter. Discover how sexy the future can be at carinapress.com today. Performing analysis. All right, after that awesomeness, uh, we're going to wrap so things cool. up. Really cool guy. That was just cool, I love cool. Saul. So, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, we gave out last week's secret code phrase for a giveaway mm-hmm. on Twitter. Oh, we did. Because somebody Twitter. forgot to include it in the show. Yeah, way to go, Sam. Um, so it was we're totally a- Brian's fault. I know. <laughs> yeah, I admit it. It actually is my fault. Um, we're giving away three copies of the new Car from Hell movie, Super Hybrid. It's Sam's car, basically. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. With teeth. So we're giving it. Uh, go to the Slice website and then enter to win. The, all the details of how to do that is. The secret code phrase we'll give it to you right now is Melanie Papilia P-A-P-A-L-I a Papalia 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 as in mammalia but only Papalia I say Papillon what? Papillon it's butterfly know, yeah that's it say, all I can think is Papillon so there we Papillon. go Papillon, Papillon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I wave my I cheese at you. I wave my cheese at you. Oh my God. <laughs> I wave your puppet. Uh, I wave my cheese no, at you. It's in the, uh, my bleed, is there, my brie is very runny. Your casa con hon. <laughs> it's <laughs> just you, yeah. Well, so, we got a couple minutes here. Yeah. What do we? What do we want to chat about? I don't know. So <laughs> you're, you know what? You're uh, you're watching uh, Stargate Atlantis. Correct? I am. I'm back into it now that I'm done with my BSG line. You know. Yeah, and, and you're not doing Buffy yet. You should be doing Buffy. <sighs> oh, the first God. season's so tough, isn't it? Megan, you oh, and I talk God. about this. I, you know, I like cheese, and it is cheese, but the first season really isn't that bad. It's not. T- no, it, it's yeah. not really that tough. It's not great. Yeah, but it's it's very Not till later. Tattoo. But if you're well, going even, in expecting great, because everything you hear about Buffy and yeah. Joss, then you may be disappointed. Uh, well, so but understand it's. But it's, even season even season one is not even at the end. It's really not great. Oh no, no season it, one's not very oh good. But yeah, season two just starts off with oh a absolutely. Wall. I'm gonna finish Atlantis. It gets yeah. We'll finish Atlantis mm-hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. Basically, folks, for those who haven't t- tuned in, what well, trouble is playing catch up on a lot of things. Yeah, because I, I I had a narrow point of view about things because I bless my sister or whatever. I refuse to watch anything she likes. Exactly, <laughs> siblings. That's how it goes. I'm it's like, tr- no, I won't watch Castle. I don't care if Nathan's in it. 
Oh, oh Castle's pretty cool, though, pretty believe good. it or but not. But she loves it, and I was like, I can't do it. Trust me, it's pretty good. I know, for, I know. For, yeah, it I've, is. I've been talked into it by mm-hmm. someone. You mm-hmm. can't let the terrorists win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Don't let them hold your entertainment hostage. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Words of Megan, you are just a font of wisdom. Mm-hmm. A oh. font of wisdom? A yeah. font. A font. A font. A font. A font. I love it. it was, uh, F-O-N-T? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you got a problem with that? What the font? You're you're a wedge. Exactly. You're a wedge of a fonty blue cheese. <laughs> Are we back on the French side? Yes. I'm very confused. I don't know if this is a wow. cheese metaphor or a word metaphor. It's a mold metaphor, really. It's mold. a mold. Oh, yes. mold. oh wow. Mold is but good. A, but Penicillin. A, but a fragrant and flavorful mold. <laughs> we are we are wow. so far yeah. off topic. I, I don't know if this is off a metaphor. Or something. There, is, off the deep there is absolutely save, save no mind. place for us to go from this point except to say, <laughs> "Get us out of here. We're done." Thank you so much. Um, please continue donating. Thank it you, is please. helping tremendously. Yes, it is. Uh, we have a lot of things that we're doing here in the studio. A lot of things that we're trying to get done around here. New cameras and new video and all the fun stuff. And uh, besides that, it just feeds us every week. We really, really appreciate that. So yummy, yummy in my tummy. Of yeah. course, SliceSciFi.com. Uh, you know, two zero six three three nine Trek. Two zero six three three nine Trek. There you go. Stole my job from me. Yeah. We will see you again. <laughs> Push the button in a few Equal days. Equal opportunity. <laughs> <laughs>